Greetings. Good morning, everyone. I am back. I'm Dr. Yelly Chile. Welcome to the medicine bag. Although I don't feel like it's time for the medicine bag, I feel like it's time for the percolator. Thank you so much, your doctor. Like, we could be cool because you really like the house was everything. I went back to my early childhood in Chicago. You know, you had me on my Mary J. Blige. So I had to go run and put my hoops on. You know what I'm saying? So this was this was really great. Yeah. Uh, new hair. Who this? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm a hair chameleon like Sister Mary J. Blige. Uh, I used to do hair back in a, a former life. So uh, it does change quite a bit. Um, it's so good to be back. I missed being with everyone last week. But as y'all saw, I kind of snuck in some chats. And um, I got my vintage, uh, my vintage T-shirt. Y'all know I have a love-hate relationship with museums, um, but uh, thank you. And today we're going to be talking about the thing that I think is so important about music, like house. Like when we go and we go on those dance floors and we we you know we get in that music. The point is to like let go. The point is to like free up, as they say, right? So. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Today's medicine bag, the the toolkit that we're 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 tapping into is about releasing and letting go of things, specifically in space. And this is something um, that I hope to talk about more. Please stay tuned for Black August because I'm hoping to do a full time, like a full show. Um, it's 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 overdue, and I, I do want more time to be able to talk with you all about these things. But um, today we're just gonna do a little bit. We're gonna just stick a toe into the concept of cleaning and clearing space. Um, and also making sure that we're doing that in a responsible way. Um, I, I first wanted to give honor to Mama Asada Shakur, um, who has been a, 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 a mentor to me without being a direct mentor to me. I want to stand with the Cuban people um, and, and call for an end to El Bloqueo. I also want to give Kim, Sister Kim, my, my deepest condolences for the loss of your doggy. I didn't know. And, um, you know, in my head, I had planned since I'm in your neighborhood now to like go dog walking with you, with our doggies and all these parks out here. Um, but maybe that'll be another time and another, uh, you know, in a future with a different doggy. But I, I just, my heart goes out to you. Um, so how do we, how do we then deal with the negative feelings? How do we deal with the negative energy when, when we have experiences that are painful? Um, when we, we have experiences in a space that is painful, you know, like, um, that's important. Um, Spaces hold energy. Let's start there, right? Um, and you can ask your great grandmom on them. She knows that spaces hold energy. You can ask a physicist. Spaces hold energy. Um, you can ask Hollywood and all these horror films about the, you know, the, the crazy houses that do things to people, right? Spaces hold energy. Um, and one of the things that I think is so important about learning, clearing, um, cleaning and clearing work. Um, is because as we struggle for liberation, we are doing so in many in many cases on colonized land, on captured land, land on which genocides have taken place, lands in which racial terror um, and all kinds of oppression have taken place. Right? We are um, basically living in sites of terror. Right? And we really have to understand that. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been to a, a a specific home or you've moved into a place, right? I've just moved here, so I'm real conscious about this right now. Or moved to a, a, a business location, for instance, and you see a high turnover rate, like no business will thrive on that land, right? I always wonder, like, if something really horrible happened there and it's just kind of cursed, like the energy is bad and it hasn't been uh, alleviated, the issue. But that's literally the whole place. Like if you're in North America, if you're in the Caribbean, if you're in South America, if you're in various colonized sites in, in the rest of the Black world, um, you are living in one of these sites that may carry this kind of negative energy. So we have to make sure that we, we clear enough to be able to do the work that we need to do in the space. Um, we also have to be able to clear the energy of interpersonal conflict, right? Things happen in our homes. You know, we have arguments, we have disagreements. That is kind of important because sometimes it's almost like you have a room where you always argue with folks. <laughs> you have a room where you have a lot of peace. 
I am really sensitive to that, but I think I've cultivated that over time. That's my particular brand of magic, feeling energy in a space and fixing it. But we, we really cannot, sometimes we miss those dynamics going on. Um, so I wanted to give a few tips on how to cleanse and clear space. Um, the first tip I'll give is to let the sun shine in. The first tip is to let the sun shine in. When I was looking for a home, I saw lots of apartments and, and houses and townhomes. And what I realized is, you know, when you look at the pictures of the people, you can actually tell who lives there, right? Their belongings and stuff, you know, hair products in the bathroom. So I noticed that a lot of Black folks, a lot of African folks, our folks have really dark homes, like cavernous homes. There's lots of heavy window coverings. It's dark in there. Um, some of that could be because of watching lots of TV and film and just media consumption, gaming. But some of it, I almost feel like we create these cocoons in our houses to protect ourselves from the outside world. But we block the sunlight, right? And we talked about connecting with the sun, but we are literally living in spaces that block that connection. So one of the things we have to do is really be cognizant of letting our sunlight into our homes. We can't grow anything. Y'all can't get with Dr. Layla Brown's plan of the day if you don't have sunlight coming into your home, right? So that's one thing, like be cognizant of your sunlight and catch as much of it in your home as possible and clear pathways, literally clearing footpaths in your home because sometimes we actually, my friends call this my African feng shui, but we actually block energy flow in our houses because we put objects in the path of just walking and moving around, getting to the things we need to get to in our homes easily. So these, these aren't even spiritual practices. These are really practical things, but a lot of what is practical is spiritual at the same time. I'll give you an example. Sweeping. I have a broom right here. Um, I threw away uh, a couple of my, my, my brooms because the idea is when you move to a new place, you don't bring your old brooms with you. You don't bring old dirt into new places. But um, when you go to many uh, black and brown countries, many African countries, you'll see the women sweeping out the houses in the morning, right? Sweeping right out the front door. Some of y'all know you've seen this. You can see it in Cuba. You can see it in Haiti. You can see it in Nigeria. You can see it in Ghana. Sweeping out the front door with the little, the little like, the little hand brooms bent over that sweeping but that's deep culture you see it in parts of the south in the united states they are not simply sweeping dust and dirt out of the house they are sweeping out negative energy stale toxic energy the the fight they had the night before they're sweeping on on deeper levels so sweeping out your house and literally making sure that it goes out of your house whatever the dirt is whatever the energy is, that the broom catches that and sweeps out. Yeah, you, your grandma, they know, they know. Um, you, you could even do things to enhance the sweeping process. You can um, focus not just on getting rid of things and energies, but actually inviting energies in. So when you sweep, you can sweep with something like salt. I'm trying to like cover up the brand. This is Epsom salt. And this Epsom salt has burnt bergamot and sweet orange oils in it, in mixed in with the salt. But you know, Epsom salt, just salt is a really great way to clean. Your grandmama them knew Epsom salt wasn't just for a good bath. Salt itself put in the corners of your house is a way to make sure that negative energy can't exist there. Um, so sweeping with salt, like putting salt down and using that to sweep and push that energy, push, push the salt around your house and then out is a way of inviting um, the energy you want and getting rid of the energy you don't want. Um, also, when you're cleaning, making sure that you're organizing your, your stuff. And, and we're trying to connect Marie Kondo with Maroons here. Okay, in my head, this is how this looks. So Marie Kondo wants us to organize our places and do and keep the things that spark joy, right? That's really important. But we also want to make sure we organize for access, easy accessibility to the things we need. If we Look at the ways that maroon societies were organized. A lot of our maroon communities were organized in concentric circles. You can even talk about the Dismal Swamp here in, the, in North America. You can talk about um, Palmares in Brazil, where the warrior classes of people would be on the edges, the able-bodied young men and women would be toward the outside, their, 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 their sleeping quarters, the places where they would dwell. And then when you get toward the inner circles, you have the babies and the elders. When we have gatherings, when we have protests, when we have marches, 
So it's not just your home. This is community space. You will keep the, the, the less protected or perhaps more vulnerable ones in the interior of your space um, so that they can be protected from the outside and the people that are more able-bodied to, to protect can, can do that. And there are lines of defense right before you get to that core. That's really important. Even when dealing with precious objects in your home, precious belongings in your home, those should not be at the periphery of your home by the front door so someone can grab them and run out. Those should be in the inside of your home, in the heart of your home, difficult to get to, right? So organizing and arranging objects in a way that makes sense, that is easy to access for you and difficult to access for everyone else. Other ways to clean and clear your home are um, smudging or what they call, you know, smudging. Um, I wanted to really just take a minute to talk about sage and smudging. I'm going to share my screen with you all and switch to an article from five years ago. And this is um, just an image from the Baltimore Sun, I believe. Y'all remember the Freddie Gray protests? when that group of, um, of, of Baltimore black folks came out and smudged uh, the whole scene when the people hit the streets. Um, they were smudging the police officers with sage. This is actually a friend of mine. Um, I thought that was really powerful, um, what they were doing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I want us to really be clear that in some ways, even though we see African spiritual practices or spiritual indigenous spiritual practices as a way of liberation, we don't want to do what capitalism always wants us to do, which is actually reproduce this reckless, um, harmful consumerism, even with our spirituality, even with the things that liberate us, we can be oppressing other people. So this is a bundle of white wild sage. Some of y'all are really familiar with these. And whenever there's bad energy, people, this is like the first thing people say, like smudge it. Oh, you, burn, you need to burn some sage on that. Let's not, African people, let's not do this one, okay? Um, sage is, 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 is a really important herb for the indigenous or First Nations people of North America. Smudging itself is a very deep ritual that belongs to that culture. It's not our stuff, right? And truth be told, sage is like a reset button. Sage is like, it, it wipes everything clean. Like it's, it erases everything, good and bad stuff. It's just, it's just a, it just wipes everything out. So if you wanna keep the good stuff, you wouldn't use the city way. But people don't think about the meanings of the ritual, the medicine in each plant. They don't really know what it does. And so because they, they are sold these things out of context, we use them recklessly and irresponsibly. So what I'm asking you to do is to consider using something that is not sage. This is being harvested, over harvested um, in places like California in a way that is reckless, just irresponsible. Um, it's being cultivated in a way that is disrespectful to the land. Traditionally, you would take the sage plant, leave the root in the earth, and you would do a prayer of thanks to the plant. None of that is happening with these companies, these like new agey white companies that are telling you that they're wild harvesting or handcrafting the sage and hand bundling it for you to buy. They are they are culture vultures appropriating someone's culture, um, disturbing ecosystems, and then selling it to you. And we black folk cannot continue to participate in this because then we are now complicit and and contributing to the problem, right? So, alternatives to the sage. So there are so I'm not saying that we don't have a relationship with sage. We have a relationship with many of the plant life here in this this particular continent because of our our, our forced connection to the land. We have connection with tobacco, as we discussed in the Juneteenth video. We have a connection with sweet grass, cedar. Um, we have a connection with Palo Santo, although I would put Palo Santo in the deforestation of this particular uh, tree in the same category with sage. Tobacco is different. Cedar is different. Sweet grass is different. This is a braid of sweet grass that I burn. I've had this for years, actually. I preserved it and I burn this. When I'm paying homage to the native people, before I do any ritual work on this land, I pay homage to the original stewards of the land. But I received this braid from someone who grew it. 
you can use white sage if you grew it yourself. You can use Palo Santo if you went and got the tree and said the thanks to yourself. But what I'm saying is let's try to be responsible about how we get things. Um, so, so some alternatives to sage are uh, um, bay leaves. You can get that from the grocery store. <laughs> basil, sweet basil, holy basil, rosemary. Um, you can even clean with some basic water, right? So again, I'm trying to get people to think that this spiritual practice is not something that you have to be wealthy to do. You don't have to buy all these specialized products that are that are now becoming trendy. You can get some water, some rain. You can collect rainwater to cleanse with and wipe down your walls and your floors in your house. You can charge it in the moon, leave it out under moonlight. If you need to calm the energy in your house, you can leave it out in the sunlight and charge it up if you need to lift some energy because you're feeling down. You can use water, you can use salt, you can use red brick dust. We got bricks in the hood. Bust up a red brick. This helps keep things out your house. Put it along your threshold. Once you clean out your house, play keep away, keep all the things you don't want in your house out of your house, right? So there are ways to do this that are low cost, um, that really, it, spirituality is, is basic elements. Your enslaved ancestors, your revolutionary ancestors, these people did not have access to, to go buy crystals at TJ Maxx. You can use crystals. This is a selenite crystal. Don't go to TJ Maxx. Most of my crystals I bought from uh, geologists who actually were studying. I had university access to geology departments. So I, but you can actually go to certain sites and pick your own, right? There's a place in Georgia you can go and, and harvest, you know, gather your own minerals and crystals out the earth or get build relationships with people who cultivate these things. If you if you want to use bay rum, which is taking some bay leaves and adding some other great stuff. This is from Black Witch based out of Chicago. Um, find a practitioner and build a relationship, someone who makes bay rum and clean your house, um, who makes Florida water. This Florida water is very problematic. This is cologne. We use this, we use this a lot. You can make your own Florida water um, instead of just buying a bunch of chemicals and thinking that that's spiritual work, right? Um, you can use frankincense, which is an important resin um, that is ancient, right? It's biblical even, um, but frankincense is something that has belonged in many, many cultures. Um, you can um, you can use, oh gosh, a bunch of stuff. There's There are so many other alternatives that don't um, require you to participate in the, the capitalist consumerist madness because you don't want to bring that into your spirituality because then your spirituality is not liberation. It is really just um, commercialism in a dashiki. <laughs> And we don't want to do that. Um, so um, in the chat, please share the, the ways that you have learned or are in your family in terms of spiritually cleansing a place. I, I, I always believe in us sharing out information. But um, please think about that. Think about it when you are out there struggling against, you know, banging up against, you know, the, 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 the alabaster madness, as, as others have said. Just make sure that you... The, the space you're going to be entering to wage this battle, wherever your organization meets, let the sun shine in, clean and clear. If y'all have a disagreement in your organization, clear it out afterwards so you don't come in the next meeting and feel that energy there. Just make sure that you're constantly being aware of the energy that is in a space so that you can give yourself the best opportunity to have the, the most optimal um, uh, experiences in that space. Because we, we need every tool, we need every path as clear as it possibly can be to do this work. So this is just my little intervention from the medicine bag this week, and I will see you all very soon. <laughs>